Welcome to the 2015 Prime Minister's Science Awards. There's great excitement here because this is the inaugural awarding of the Prime Minister's Prize for Innovation. We caught up with the Prime Minister a little earlier today for his thoughts on why it's important to celebrate innovation. Prime Minister, it's the big night, the uh, Prime Minister's Science Awards for 2015 and the inaugural Prime Minister's Prize for Innovation. Why is it important that we celebrate innovation? Because if we are not innovative, we will not be able to remain a high-wage, generous social welfare net first world economy. The reality is that the world offers us greater opportunities than ever before. The global economy is bigger than ever before. It is expanding faster than ever before. It is being disrupted at a pace, at a velocity that is utterly unprecedented in human history. And this offers great opportunities expanding so rapidly and the only limitations on our ability to exploit them is our enterprise and imagination, our ability to innovate. We have to be more innovative, more competitive, more productive, more imaginative. And all of that requires the disciplines that we have from science, the ability to analyse, the ability to experiment, the ability to be agile. Those are the keys to our success in the years ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the presentation of the 2015 Prime Minister's Prizes for Science. My name's Adam Spencer and it's a pleasure to welcome you all here tonight for this wonderful celebration of all things scientific. I'll get us started on the social media front. I'll just take a quick selfie of me. Especially the tables just here, Prime Minister, I can just see you, so a little bit of animation, here we go. <laughs> Looking great. It's really just a photo of me, but don't worry, here we go. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Christopher. And can I say uh, right at the outset, uh, before I embark on the extravagant praise that is due to Ian Chubb, can I uh, second the, the remarks that uh, Christopher made about his predecessor in the industry and science portfolio, Ian McFarlane. <laughs> Ian has been a remarkable leader in Australian government over many years. The best accolade I can give Ian Chubb is to assure him that we're working to put into effect the very ambitious agenda he set us. We have to be and we will be a country that invests in science and puts it right at the centre of our national agenda. Now, the Prime Minister's Science Awards have been a feature of the Australian scientific community since 2000. In that time, the recipients of the award have come from all around the world. At least six were born outside of Australia. It's a reminder that in fostering an environment for innovation science, we have to build an ecosystem from the bottom up. At the top are the great institutions, like our universities and the CSIRO, but below that are educational institutions, like schools, that inspire the next generation of researchers to become interested in science. Two teachers tonight I spoke to, prime, one primary, one secondary, uh, who have won prizes tonight and will be honoured later. They are really in the front line. If we are to be a, a more scientifically literate community, as we must be, if we are to be more aware of, of, the, of the challenges of the world around us and prepared to engage them and investigate them in an honest and rigorous way, then we need great teachers, not just at the universities, not just to, for doctoral students, but in primary schools and secondary schools. Good teachers change lives. The charisma, the passion of a good teacher, and I suspect most of us here in this room have had their lives changed by a great teacher. I certainly have. Those great teachers change people's lives 
and in doing so, they can change the destiny of a nation. They are at the very fulcrum of destiny, changing lives at their most impressionable at the time when you can ensure that somebody's real potential can be maximised. They are shaping Australia in the 21st century. My former uh, partner in establishing Ozima said that in this age, to be many years ago, well over 20 years ago, when the frontier of knowledge is advancing at the greatest rate ever in our history, we're not lacking in technological tools. What we often lack is technological imagination. And that's, of course, a fundamental point when it comes to some of the limitations of government. We play a critical role in ensuring that we get the basic settings right, from investments in education, pure research and infrastructure, to our own use of technology. We play a very important part in supporting the entire innovation system. But we can't simply flick a switch to turn on an innovation nation. We have to fund targeted programs with a clear policy rationale. The objective is ensuring that the Australians have the ability to realise all of their dreams more than ever, that they have greater opportunities, that their intellect, their imagination can be better exploited and displayed and deployed all around the world, and we do that by ensuring that we are agile. And you are a critical part of it. So I want to say congratulations to all of you. It is a great honour for me, not just to be Prime Minister, but to be your Prime Minister, to be the Prime Minister that says that science is right at the centre and the heart of our national agenda. And not just that, it is at the very heart and the centre of our future. Thank you very much. So, Prime Minister, for his seminal research into modelling the world's most important biological reaction, photosynthesis, the 2015 Prime Minister's Prize for Science has been awarded to distinguished Professor Graham Farquhar.